three of Brisbane Roar's young talents have signed for Dutch side FC Utrecht. Uh, Tommy Orr, Michael Zulo and Adam Sorota spent two weeks training with the club who are in uh, Holland's first division and having impressed, signed three-year deals with Orr on a five-year contract. Very excited to be joining FC Utrecht. Um, yeah, I think it's a very prestigious club and yeah, it's a dream come true for me to be playing in Europe, so yeah, very happy. I really enjoyed my two weeks here and the, the quality of football they play and the style is, is suits, um, I think, us three Australians. And yeah, obviously they're a club with big prospects for the future, so we're very happy to be a part of it. Why did you come to Holland? Uh, we came to, uh, to further our career and uh, hopefully to, uh, you know, become better footballers and uh, to give us a better chance to play for the national team. So what is your ambition then? Um, my ambition, obviously, this year is to, to maybe get into the into the World Cup squad, but it's it's pretty unlikely. But um, over, obviously, over the next few seasons, I need to to make some appearances for for Utrecht and, and, and play well. The clubs are keeping the financial details of the deal confidential, which is reported to be worth almost two million dollars. Well, joining us now on the line is the Brisbane Raw chief executive, Peter McLennan. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Chris. Peter, great news uh, for the three lads. Uh, not such good news for Brisbane or their fans. Yeah, look, it's um, it's fantastic news uh, for the three boys. Obviously, we're very excited for them. Um, they've now got the chance to step up on the world stage and see what they can do in uh, one of the biggest clubs in, in Dutch football. So we're obviously we're extremely proud of them and, and what they've achieved in a short stint uh, over there. But I think, look, more importantly, I think um, we feel as a club, you know, it, it's also equally extremely good news, um, you know, for our for our club but also for our fans. You know, we never expected this to happen. You know, with the players when they went over there for the two-week training camp, but uh, they clearly impressed and uh, have secured contracts at FC. Um, you know, because uh, you know, for us as a club, this was clearly unexpected. Um, but what it has done is it's actually given us a very bright, bright future. Um, you know, as a club, uh, we're now in the best financial position we've been in since our inception. Um, you know, it means that uh, we can move forward with confidence into to season six and beyond of the A-League. But, you know, I can completely understand that uh, some of our fans out there may say this is a, a negative uh, move by letting all three of the players go at, uh, at one time. But, you know, I must, I must point out, um, you know, that, uh, that had we denied the boys this opportunity, the reality is that the, the boys could have come back and played at their final year of their contracts and then made the move next year on a free transfer. So, difficult uh, decision that the club had to make, but um, we believe it was, a, it was the right one for... Uh, longevity of, uh, of the Brisbane Raw. So Peter, in some ways, was this a, a purely financial decision for the club? Look, when it comes to, uh, to the sale of, of, play, of, of any players in, in terms of any um, A-League club, you know, there's different factors to consider. You know, we value our players and, and their talent and we would never stand in the way of their careers and their growth as players on the international stage. You know, so part of the decision to let them or, or let them allow them to, to take their next step in, in their careers was being realistic you know, and, and knowing that uh, it was the best thing for them. On the other side, what it does also is it frees up um, some room to move in a salary cap. But, but more importantly, yeah, look, basically speaking from a financial point of view, it certainly uh, it puts our club in a strong position. You know, it secured our future, and, and that's good news for our fans. Were we uh, near the mark, Peter, when we said it was close to a $2 million deal? Oh, look, the figures will, will remain confidential. It's between the two clubs, and, uh, you know, but um, as I said, from a financial point of view, that uh, the, the club's sound, and, and we can move forward with confidence now. How are you going to replace the players you've just lost, Peter? Yeah, look, uh, look. Obviously, look, I think if we're honest with ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to uh, to replace uh, the three boys. You know, Tom in particular. You know, but um, we have our eye on uh, a few quality A-League players and, and a few overseas players. Andrew's currently over here in Europe at the moment, looking at a few players. And from all reports back, is that uh, there's a couple of players out there that um, over there that can definitely come back and do a job for us. Um, I think also, you know, you can't underestimate the, the, the local talent that's running around. I think when you, you look at um, you know, Ivan Frangic, for example, we, we brought him in a six-week um, injury replacement uh, last season and, and absolutely Sean did a great job for us throughout the season. Another player, for example, is uh, young Matt Smith, who we were looking at one stage. And the Fury beat us to it. He, um, he got inside, I believe, a two- or three-year deal with North Queensland Fury and was one of their better players towards uh, the end of their season. So, look, it's certainly out there, but when you look at it, the nucleus... You know, of our players that we currently have, in, you know, in the, the Matt McKay's and the Massimo Madockers, to name a few, and you know, then when you had our new players coming into the mix, you know, like a Michael Theokratos, Andrew Redmayne, Eric Eric Schwiller, Costa Barbarisos, and we have also got two, uh, you know, vacant visa spots available as well. So look, I'm more than confident that um, you know we'll certainly have uh, a competitive side that will take the pitch. The next okay. Season. Thanks, Peter. Thanks very much for joining us. No problem. Thank you.
OK, while well, those uh, Brisbane players have moved on to pastures, new a, a Socceroo who's done more than his fair share of travelling returned to these shores this week. Craig Moore's stint at the Greek club Cavalla, who was unexpectedly cut short amid reports he'd been sacked. Uh, those claims were immediately dismissed by the defender from his Gold Coast home, where he spoke to Jonathan Williams. Well, mate, you've been reportedly sacked and thrown out of the club uh, and, and yeah. whatever else. Well, can you tell us... Well, I've, I've, since I mean, it's, it's hard. You're trying to explain something that um, there, there's no story there. There's nothing to explain. Since I've been back in Australia, uh, I've had contact with the with the club uh, and asked them where where these stories have come from, and they were like, "Well, we, we don't know what stories you're talking about." So I mean, I don't know whether there's a an official, unofficial website where the information has come from. Um, but I guess uh, the, the easiest way, and I guess you know, to, to tell people, I mean, feel free to get in contact with Kavala. I think the coach has come out and, and, and spoken and said that um, it was a, a lot of rubbish. Uh, the reason why I come back was we had two games left, um, and our season had, had, had come to an end, to be honest. So I, I went through the through the you know all the right channels, and uh, you know, I'm totally at ease with the with the situation. Was just a little bit um, surprised. I guess to come home to to the, to the stories, but um, you know it's not it's not the first time in my career that uh, these stories have uh, come out. Which again, um, people probably then think, well, there's no smoke without fire. My mum phones me as soon as I get back, so I, I know how the media works, and and you know she believes, uh, like a lot of people, that it must be true if it's in the paper or it's reported uh, through through the press. Um, but you know that's not a not a criticism of the media. I mean, where where the information has come from. I, I still don't know. I guess a lot of people are going to ask questions if you're going to go into a state league team. Is that the, probably the best? Well, well, I mean, do? I, I don't. I, I, well, is training is, is training for five weeks in Europe uh, the best preparation? Uh, again, like I said, I've played 44 games uh, this season. I'm not a young player. Um, I, I, I was going to have to take rest at some stage. I, I come out with the state league thing. I don't know whether that's possible. Whether that was it was just one of those things that that, that come off at the time. Uh, I'll, I'll sit down and continue to talk to, to Pim to see what the, um, the, the best plans are leading forward. Uh, what, what would another World Cup mean to you? I know, a great way to finish probably what's probably going to be you. Well, uh, I mean, this one would, would, for me would be a lot, I guess, a, a lot sweeter uh, because look, leading into it has not been, um, I guess, with, with, with the situation at the Raw when I left and also what's, what's come out now. Um, like I said, I know there's a lot of doubters out there now. Um, and I'm determined to, to really go out there and, and, and to prove those people wrong. Now, who's going to win the World Cup? Who's, who's Australia going to play in the World Cup final? You know what, a lot of people are not going to like me saying this, but I've just got something about England this time around. <laughs> a lot of people aren't going to like you saying No, I know, I know, but I, I don't know. I just think we're, um, you know, Capello, um, he, he doesn't allow any superstars. Uh, which I think in previous campaigns uh, with the English squad, uh, you've, you've, you know, you've got some fantastic players there and they've got huge profiles at their clubs and tended to, to bring that into the national team. For me, there was always a lot of, uh, a lot of problems with the national team, uh, but he certainly hasn't tolerated any of that. Um, and I, I think they'll be a real force, I really do. As always, uh, Craig Moore there, uh, very honest. Uh, Tommy's been getting uh, criticised a lot recently in terms of position in the, in the Socceroos squad. Is, is that uh, justifiable, that criticism? Two interesting stats in, uh, in what Craig had to say. That he's played 44 games already this season and he only had two left. So although he's left early, he would only have played another two games. Uh, I don't think at his age playing that number of games is going to make a huge amount of difference over what is just now a question of, of weeks. If you look at the way, uh, as a local example, Sydney FC managed um, Steve Corica towards the end of the season. He wasn't training very much. He was just ticking over. Or, uh, he was playing games, obviously. But um, when you get to that stage of the career, as, as you know, Dave, mm. you, you sort of you look after yourself much mm. more. You, and it's, it's just about ticking over, not about that, the intensity necessarily. Mm. He's such an experienced pro. And don't forget, Pim loves him. Pim mm. had him uh, in, in Munchenglad back in Germany, so mm. um, he'll, he'll be there without any doubt.